Welcome to the Profit Answer Man, Dominic Rubino. It's great to have you join us today. Rocky, it's great to be back with you again. As it is. I was uh, recently on your show. It was a wonderful experience, and we're actually going to do two episodes with you today. So I let's know. start at the beginning, though. Can you share a little bit about yourself and your business? For sure. So, uh, you know, th what I do on my show is I work specifically with contractors, you know, business owners in the construction industry who want to find ways to work smarter, not just harder. You know, most guys are out there and they've got no problem working hard, but when you get to the point where you want to get to the next level, or typically you get to that place in your business where you realize, hey, I'm trying to grow a company, that's where, that's where I come in. So I help people with things like more profits, running systems better, having a better team, and uh, generally running the business in a way that helps them grow it. I'm going to have to object because I don't want to work hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, lazy. that's what I mean. You know what? It's funny you say that. At some point, working hard stops working, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you can only, you can only work hard so far until you have to start working smarter. Can I give you a funny visual that you're probably not going to expect me to say? Yeah. So think about the Olympics. Think about the Summer Olympics every four years, right? You happen to be watching TV and it's the weightlifting track that's on. Some guy in a red singlet comes out and he's from some country in the Middle East, right? He walks up to this bar. It's ridiculous, the amount of weight on there. And you're like, i got to watch this guy do this. He walks up to the bar. He's got a huge belly, right? He looks down at the bar. He grabs it. And before you know it, it's up over his head. And then he stands there and he's kind of shaking and he drops it down and everybody claps. It's a, it's a ridiculous amount of weight. The bar is bending, right? That's every business owner listening to this show. Because through your own strength and will and conviction, you put a bit, you created a business, that's the bar on the ground. You put the weights on it, that's all of the things you added on. You've managed through your just your own hard work to get that thing over your head. And at some point you're standing there going, oh my God what do I do now? And then a business coach like me, or maybe like you comes along and says, you know, uh, we could build a rack for that. That's what I do. How's that for an analogy? I, I think that's a, that's a perfect analogy. There you go. The ridiculous weight. The ridiculous weight. Well, and I, you know, because of profit first, we always talk about some, some of these exercise analogies. And I go, the first time you go to the gym, you don't put all those weights on it and try and lift it, do you? No. no. You lift the empty bar and you work on your form and you get your systems and processes down. And then little by little, we start adding weight so that as you add weight, it's easy to lift the bar. Yeah. But the real secret is when you can have somebody else lift the bar for you and, and you get all the profit. <laughs> That's the real secret, I right? Like but too many people want to lift the I bar. Like, like, hey, how yeah. do I get somebody else to lift the bar and I just get my cut? Because truly, that's the difference between a business operator and a business owner, right? Right. When you have other people contributing to the bigger effort. And making them do that. Yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. So we're here to talk about my favorite subject, profit. How did you learn about profit first? You know, well, because I'm a business owner. I mean, first and foremost, uh, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different kinds of business coaches out there. There's the kind who read books and they read so many books, they think, oh, I want to be a business coach now. And they just go become a business coach or say they're a business coach. Uh, I came at it completely differently. I became a business owner and then I sucked at business. Horrible. I mean, I could lose money faster than anybody. I could outwork anybody, but I couldn't make money. So that's when I started on the path of trying to learn about business. And so I came across some of the more important books in business. And Rocky, you've got a ton of books behind you. I share almost that same library. But one of them was Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, which we all know, right? Uh, the E-Myth Revisited. A lot of books by Brian Tracy, who went on to be my business partner at one point. Um, different books in different genres. I, obviously, I deal a lot with lean manufacturing because I'm in construction. But that's where I came across Profit First. And I've put... I'm going to say this apologetically, pieces of profit first into my own companies. You know what? That That is literally what people do. They all put oh. pieces of profit first into their, and well, 
That is for those who open the door, walk in the gym, and take the first step, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. put oh, a we lot of certainly people have don't make it into the gym, yeah. but those and and then the question is, imagine if you had a trainer and a and a, and a cook, how 100%. would that change the way you do things? And so, yeah. I, I'm perfectly happy if people are putting pieces in and doing it themselves. I'm glad that we're at least getting them moving forward. It's a start. Forward. Yeah, it's a start. And for those who really want to and and want someone else to do it and lift the weight for them, going back to where we started, then you, you get yeah. people like us and we make your life simple. Yeah. Speaking about, you know, I have that old book. This one, not as many people know about this one. Which one's that? The, the goal? goal. Yeah. Uh, you know, by um, uh, uh, what's his last name? Starts with a G. Yeah, Goldrat. This is an Goldratt. old book. That's old. Yeah. Goals. Aliyah Gold Goldrat. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. That's all about manufacturing and processes and systems and all the people making a mess because you didn't make it so, clear. You know, books, it, let's, let's keep using the gym analogy. It's fine to read a book, but to read one book and think you've got it all solved is where a lot of people fall flat. On the other side of that is people who consume books like it's an addiction and don't actually put anything in place. Well, that's the thing. So the way I look at my books is each of these books is a recipe, right? Nice, yeah. I, I am the master cook, though. I know which recipe book or which part of which recipe is needed at this moment for your business. Nice. Yeah, so that's a great way to look at they're it. They're all perfect. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Yeah. But, you know, I, go I do don't it. want it. Well, go A, do go it. do it. And B, yeah. don't use a cake recipe to make a pie. It ain't going to work. <laughs> you know, and you have to know the little nuances that... that even though you follow the recipe, for some reason it's not perfect. It's because you don't know the nuances, and that, that's what we do. So have you seen success from people who've used Profit First? I know you deal with a Absolutely. lot of business owners. Yeah, and I have to say, well, I've seen success personally, but I've, I've seen success with my clients who come to me, and they, they're already putting Profit First in place, or sometimes they'll use the plates analogy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm talking about dinner plates, not the weightlifting plates now. I've switched the type okay. of plate, yeah. But they'll use that plates analogy and they're like, you know, what? we've got our accounts set up and we're starting to move things around. And that's generally part of the path that people take is they're trying to put something in place to add discipline into their business. They're moving from being that operator into a into an entrepreneur, even though it's tentative first steps, they're they're making stages, making steps. So, yeah, I've, I've seen people do great things there. You know, it's how they take vacations. It's how they buy a CNC. It's. It's how they cover their tax bill. <laughs> yeah, that you know what that was one of the that was one of the biggest ahas for me was we all hate paying taxes and I get it and we want to appropriately reduce the tax bill where we still keep the money and we've got many secrets on how to do that. That's another episode. But it was the fact that the business owner could look the accountant in the eye and go, "I owe how much? Here's a check." Have a nice yeah. day. Yeah. And and just yeah. be able to do that. It just let them confidence and just all the worry is gone. Like you're, how you're in the driver's seat. You're proactive yeah. in your business. You're not going to the accountant thinking it like you're in front of your high um, uh, kindergarten principal and you're in trouble. You're you're in front of the accountant like, how much do I owe in taxes? I'm so sorry. No. That you you get the number and you're like, oh, you know what? We over budgeted. I got an extra seven grand in there. Sweet. Move that to another plate, which is called Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. And if yeah. you're smart, that'll be where the corporate board retreat is. Well, of course. <laughs> so that it now becomes tax deductible. Now it comes tax deductible. <laughs> you know, people laugh people laugh and think that people in business do that. You know, all oh, those business people, it's right off. It's a tax deduction. Yes. Yes, it is a tax deduction. Take a course while you're on vacation and write the thing off. And Rocky, you're way more financially minded than I am on the, the legalities of that. But that's how you do it. All right. So a couple things. You do have to have some rules. If you're going to have a meeting, you need an agenda. You need notes. There, there are certain things that you have to follow and do and record. And as long as you do that, then you're fine. You do have to do it. We're not tax cheats here we do it appropriately and I, we follow yeah. the guidelines and you got to talk to your cpa make sure you're both on the same page and all that stuff but 
there are ways to do this appropriately. And in the same right. thing, you know, maybe there's a conference in Hawaii. So you attend a conference and you tack a couple extra As you days should. on. As, As you, you should. should. And then you set up meetings on those days with your friends who are in the business and you talk business because that's what you do. And again, there's a million ways to do this and, and make it work. Um, so we're here today to talk about profit leaks because mm. every business has hundreds of profit leaks, but you're going to focus on eight. eight so we're going to make simple, right? Yeah, eight, I love simple eight systems. Simple yeah. profit leaks in the business. So yeah. tell us, uh, how you want to do these one by one? <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah, right, let's, let's do that. Let me, let me talk about profit leaks from the, from, from the eye, eyes of a business owner. And, you know, I'm speaking about this through construction, but this would work if you were a dentist or you ran a grocery chain. Think that you're walking down a path and that path has, you know, flagstones, stepping stones on it. And there's eight of those stepping stones. My job as a business owner is to know that there's eight first. And then I just walk up to the first one and I just pick up the corner and I look underneath it and there's going to be a profit leak. All I have to do is fix that little profit leak and then carefully put the stone back down and move to the next one. The confidence, you, you and I have talked a lot about confidence today and predictability and seeing the future. There's a big part of that here that says I'm going to find another profit leak. That's much different than being surprised by a profit leak. So let's start with that. So let me scan through all of them really quickly. And then we'll go back and you, maybe you can ask me on which one you think is juiciest. Okay. How's that sound? So profit leak number one is sales. Believe it or not, sales can be a profit leak for you. The next one is one that you're probably very familiar with, is that you're struggling with high costs. The third one, and this is one that really is front and center for a lot of people, is that I see wasted efforts inside my company. Number four is that we're not really great at estimating. Number five is I have a collections problem, like we have an accounts receivable problem. Number six is you're not working with budgets that you believe in. Number seven is, I'm going to call it bad accounting and bad forecasting. And number eight is we have the wrong customer or we're not doing the right jobs. Now that is account, uh, that's, um, uh, I'm sorry, construction language. Obviously you've got listeners from across the spectrum of business, but for, for contractors, we can work with the wrong customer and it just sucks money and time like you wouldn't believe. Those are the eight. Okay. So some of these seem pretty... Basic. Basic, like high costs. You know you have high costs, which tells me... Either you need to negotiate or you need to raise prices to cover the high costs that you have, yeah. or you need to rethink your business model. Yeah. So the discipline that comes with understanding, these are simple. Or, but or you need to pay attention because that's a lot of times the cable company, the phone company, actually just some, someone just told me, I forget what vendor raised their prices like 25% and didn't even tell them. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, I just did this exercise with a brand new client that we brought on and, and it's the discipline of going back and looking at the cost. It's easy to say, of course we have high costs. What a dumb thing to say. Gas prices are going up. Transportation's going up. Uh, after COVID uh, distribution costs went up. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is an awareness of my costs. And here's what happened in the exercise. We sat down with somebody and said, let's look at your overheads, line by line, boring item by boring item. We found a cell phone that he thought had been canceled two years ago. Mm -hmm. We found a, and you know, a bunch of other little things, but some of the, the cooler ones was he had uh, bought a subscription to some video processing thing that was going to help him make social videos. One of his people said, we need this. They hadn't used it. And it was about to auto renew for the second year for full price. It was like a thousand dollars. But here's something that my uncle taught me when I was a framer in construction. If you could afford to lose $1,000, you could have afforded to take that $1,000. And that's a profit leak. That should have gone to me, to my family's kitchen table, not to some software company I don't even use. No, and I think just along those lines, though, you, <clears throat> you sign up for Software X. Yeah. Then you sign up for Software Y. Then you sign up for software Z and software Z does what X and Y does. 
And so you stopped using X and Y because he's doing it all, but nobody canceled X and Y. Or, yeah. or I have 12 Gmail accounts and six people <laughs> left. And now I have 18 Gmail accounts because I have six new people and yeah. nobody canceled the old Gmail accounts. Like, right, with, so with the storage, the Google storage of all the old files. And, yeah. And, and part of that is literally having systems and processes that when somebody comes on board, what's all the things we're signing them up for? And then mm -hmm. how do I delete them all when they leave and cut their access and get their cell phone back and, and all these different things? And all of this, you know, a thousand bucks is a thousand bucks. And you do that times 10. Now you're at 10 grand. You do that times 12 months. And now. And you do it by you're five years. Money. Yeah. Right. The other one is sales. And, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. My biggest thing is the amount of sales that are lost because nobody even picked up the phone. Like return to return the to the customer. Oh, yeah. yeah. So sales, it's funny because when I, when I mention to people that one of the profit leaks is in sales, I get that look. You know the look when a dog hears a funny noise? It just goes, huh? They just turn their head 25 degrees, huh? That's, but sales has so many leaks in it. Wrong customer, um, tire kickers, people that are never going to buy from you, but make you do a million bids, estimates, proposals, whatever you call them, right? Um, sales cycle time. Or Rocky, you might've seen this one and I'm going to ask you for your opinion. If I pay my salespeople on sales versus gross profit, Rocky, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, yeah, we'll discount left it. We'll do anything to get the sale. We'll give away everything to get the sale. That's the sales rep who gets paid on 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 gross on sales number. Yeah. But when you start to compensate a rep on gross profit, now they now we have aligned our expectations. Correct. Yeah. So it's uh, if uh, am I allowed to say this on your show? That's a very sexy profit leak. There's a lot of meat on that bone. There is a lot to find there. There is. I always say your profit is made at the sale. So it, and it goes to one of your others, which is estimating, yeah. which if you like, if you do it wrong up front, you gave away all your profit to begin with. Green, green peppers on a pizza. It's just going to yeah. repeat on you again and again. That mistake up front just comes back as burps later. It, it does. And I think wasted effort is a big one because what I find is most business owners don't have the time to create the system because it's just faster for me to do it than for me to teach somebody how to do it. And they don't create the systems and processes that allow it to be repeatable and growable. And they don't even realize that they don't necessarily need to keep them up to date. Somebody else can do this for you. I mean, Mike's other book, Clockwork, is all about that. And... I think our second episode is going to be all about that too um, yeah. when we chat about that. But I'd love to yeah. hear your thoughts. Yeah. So the, uh, the wasted efforts one is interesting because most of us are running a business that we're an expert in technically. At, at least that's the case for me as a, you know, construction trades. And that's my, my professional background has been in and out of construction trades. But, you know, you might have people listening who are dentists. You become a dentist, then you run a dental clinic, right? And the challenge is... Two things. First of all, I'll, I'll do the funny one first, is that the further away you get from doing the technical job, the faster you used to be. So I used to be a framer. I used to be a painter. I used to do home renos, like a, a small home renos, like I'd fix fences and decks and build them. So now if you ask me how long does it take me to build a deck, I had to do that whole deck in three days. Well, that's faster than I ever built a deck in real life because I haven't swung a hammer in that long, right? But the other one is, is we're not estimating based on the actual speed it takes a regular person who's punching the clock to do the work. Yeah, there, you see? That's the one. Because yeah. I, I see it a lot. Even the builders who are still swinging hammers, well, that'll take me two hours. Yeah. But that's you're a superhero. You. Yeah, that's because you them. lifted that ridiculous weight over your head. You're the Batislavian guy in the red singlet. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get that red singlet out of your head, can I? Uh, yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah. So and wasted I, efforts is a big one, and it tends to be the first frustration. You know when you said, why, why would people talk to you, Dom? It's because they're frustrated about something in their business. And what I get from people, especially because I do construction, is, Dom, I show up to the job site and I'm already shaking my head because I know what I'm going to see. They see wasted efforts everywhere, and they just see that's money going out the door. But we can fix that with simple systems. 
checklists, processes, right? check-ins, pictures. Uh, we're dealing that with one of my clients now. It's like, at the end of the day, you guys send me pictures because if I see the picture, I can see all the things you missed, which are going to cause a ripple effect that's going to cause a lot of money if we don't do it before the next step occurs. Yeah. And yeah, it, can I that's get all, where checklists come in. Can I get all business coachy on you? Yeah. So still inside of wasted efforts, one of the things that's important for a business owner to do is, this is the business coachy part. Everybody get ready to roll your eyes on cue. This is where your values become really important. Because if your value is to do jobs on time and on budget, then you care about quality and punctuality. And so now our job site rules need to be punctuality. And the job site rule list is, is something along the lines of, uh, we, we get to work at 7.15 for a 7.30 start. We are a punctual company and we care about time. Then rule number two, if we care about quality is, we value quality. We are proud craftsmen. If you're not proud of your work, go back and fix it. That's, those are just two rules as an example. But that's where the wasted efforts starts, by setting the expectations for our people that that's what it means to be on my team. And that's done during the hiring process. That's right. It goes way back to when we start with people. Mm -hmm. They all go together. Has the wasted effort and the estimating kind of come together in this one, or is there more on the estimating side? Well, yeah. So estimating comes back to a little bit of discipline and, and having simple systems. For instance, estimating, I'm going to say some words that are, that are just dripping honey to Rocky Love Honey, which is do you understand the difference between gross profit margin and net profit margin. And I know that sounds simple, but for some people listening in the safety of wherever they're listening, they're like, actually, I don't. Explain this thing to me. Gross pro you have to have enough gross profit so that after you remove all the expenses of running the business and the job, there's something left for you. And if we're not estimating with the right amount of gross profit, with pride and confidence, we're never gonna make money. The way I look at this, just and if we stay to the trades, gross profit is how much it costs to do the job, yeah. right? Then that's my gross profit. And then my net profit is how much it costs me to run my company. Run the company, and right? Run the job, the, run the company. Run, Yeah, it's, it's yeah. running the company and, and all of the people who have nothing to do with the job like your accountant and your lawyer and your electric bill in your office and your salesperson person who answers. Yeah. yeah. The salesperson, the person who answers the phone, all of those things that actually, I mean, you could even put the salesperson into gross profit, depending on how you look at things. Everything is fungible. There's no perfect right answer. It's what right. works for you and your business and how you do things. Um, now, and and I, I will say this sec? and we've talked oh. about this. Yeah. A small change in gross profit can make a massive change in net profit. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Thank you. No, you just said what I was going to say. Oh, I should have it's or, but it's But it's order of operations, which sounds boring, which sounds boring, but it, you have to know which. So business is a series of levers and buttons. One mm -hmm. of the things that I'm pretty good at, and I assume you're pretty good at, is I know which ones to push, which ones to pull, and which ones to ignore. Because we're all faced with a thought. You know, imagine that every business own, out, owner out there is an EDM DJ. You know, the electronic EDM music and they've got that big mixer board in front of them and all the buttons and dials. You and I know how to do that in a business. I don't know how to do it as a DJ, but those guys make magic. And we are expecting business owners to do the same thing and nobody's showing them how to use the thing. That's where you and I come in. Did I show you my spreadsheet and how we oh, figure out? Oh, I thought you were going to say you're a DJ on the side. No. Did I show you the spreadsheet and our levers and how they work? No, no. I'd oh, love to see it. Yeah, we'll, we'll show, yeah. Literally, what you're talking about, we, we, we create the levers of the entire business from, mm. we start with lead flow. And we look at all the levers from lead flow to sale, from sale to gross profit, from gross profit to net profit. And that's where <laughs> everyone else stops. But here's I where a, we continue. Yeah. We go to the balance sheet because that's where wealth is built. 
and we start looking at and because we're going to talk about this next AR, mm -hmm. AP, inventory, right. loans. The okay, sh I'm sure you've never heard this story, but the business owner who has a speedboat, a jet ski, a vacation home that all need to come out of the business and he's sucking the business dry to pay for those. Yeah. All of these things, all the way down to the end of the day, how much cash do I have left in the business to run it? How much yeah. excess cash do I have? So when I hit a hiccup, and I'm going to tell you right now, you're all going to hit hiccups, okay? And I I'm saying that time. nicely. Yeah. If you can make it through the hiccups, especially a recession, you will be able to crush all the competition. Yep. But you've got to have the cash built up for that. So we, we, every single part of that is a lever. We look at every lever. We look at the strength and the weaknesses of the lever. We look at the cost of the lever. And we can play games. And we can play yeah. what if. And then we go do it. Then you've Back got a plan. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed what you said. Should we collections. Go to collections? Oh, yeah. I, 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 so if we're talking about collections as a profit leak, I'm going to say something that might sound surprising. If you have a collections problem, I would be very curious about whether you actually have a marketing problem. I would say if you have a collections problem, A, you need to decide whether you're a bank or not. <laughs> yeah. Two... I, I think it comes back to systems and processes. So I, 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 I say this story a hundred times. I say it again. I still have people I owe money to who have never sent me a bill. So I don't even know how much I owe them. Yeah. I look at my clients' books. I'm like, what do you mean the job's not closed out? The house was sold three months ago. Yeah, but the plumber hasn't sent me the bill. I'm like, is your plumber rich? Like, how does your plumber not bill you for two months? Yeah. Oh, and, listen, Rocky, I've had it here. Yeah. Christmas Eve, we had uh, our landscaper, like the guy that mows my lawn, come to the door and give me his annual bill, Christmas Eve. And I'm like, dude, go away. What are you doing here? He's like, oh, no, no, you owe me the money from summertime. I'm like, you're billing me now? I have no problem paying you, but I don't have a check anymore. <laughs> you waited, and you waited till December 25th to give me an invoice? Anyways, yeah, I'm I'm constantly stunned by that. But you know what? There's so many little systems let me just talk about collections as a people problem because mm -hmm. I already hinted that it might be a marketing problem, but let's think it's a people problem. If you've got the person on your team, uh, let's say you've got an accountant or a bookkeeper and they're a very nice person. They're a very quiet person, but they're also very friendly and you've got them in charge of collections. You have a problem in your process in Rocky's already smiling here because you've got a friendly, nice person who wants to make friends reaching out to people who owe you money. Anybody who's smart will figure out, she's pretty nice. Oh, yeah, Brenda, great to hear from you. How's the kids? Blah, blah, blah. And whatever, they're just not going to get to that billing conversation. If you have somebody with the right behavioral style on your accounting team who's kind of pit bullish, but polite. That's the same word I was going to use, pit bull. Yeah, polite persistence will win all the time, but you have to have a very focused effort. Hey, Rocky, let's say that I'm the, the bookkeeper. Hey, Rocky, it's Dominic calling. How you doing? Listen, we've got that open invoice. I'd like that to be our agenda for today's call. Okay. So here's what I tell my people. Yeah. That's too late. Oh, 100%. That's why I said because, it's a marketing problem. Well, no. Even just in that whole process, I, I deal with a lot of business users who deal with other businesses. So mm. the first thing we do, especially for a new client, five days before the bill is due, you pick yes. up the phone and call, hey, A, is everything good? Yeah. Yes or no? B, did you get the bill? C, is it in the right format for you? Is it going right. to the right person? Did it get to the right place? Yeah. Now, they know that you know <laughs> that you're looking for money in a few days. Yeah. And that everything is in place properly so that the next time you make the call, it's not the first time. Because this is the friendly call, right? We're not asking for money. We're just no, making it's sure five days in advance, just making sure. Wonderful and ready to go. And Can yeah. I give you a – so these are the little things that you learn when, like you and I, we have 100 books behind us on the shelf, maybe 1,000. But these little tips all add up. So here's one that's going to cost you no money but eliminates the problem when we hear somebody say, you know what, it's here on my desk. I just can't seem to find it. Now, I'm assuming it's paper, not electronic. But I do like sending paper and electronic. This is not the time to save money. 
when I'm sending an invoice, right? Print it on high vis paper, like bright pink, bright yellow, bright green. Because then you can just say to Brenda at the company you're dealing with, Brenda, it's easy to find. You're going to see it on bright green paper. It's going to stand out on her desk. Uh, do you mind if I give you another funny one that's totally human nature? Yeah. Okay, so you have to do this in advance. This goes to wasted efforts, but wasted efforts in collections. So I'm crossing paths here with a couple of leaks. But you know, Rocky, like the things that you and I help people put in place, they often impact the business multiple ways and it all adds up to a success, right? So you do this before you have a challenge with a vendor. This has to be done, and we're going to say Brenda's the person at the other company. Things are going well. But what you want to do is send Brenda Skittles in the mail. Like a package of Skittles, like vending machine size. It doesn't have to be fancy, right? Now, there's nothing attached to this. You don't have an open invoice. It's, it's just the regular course of business. But along with that is a handwritten note card signed by you, by hand, not printed on a computer, like very human. Hey, Brenda, just wanted to say thanks. We always love working with you. You know, you're great. Thought you'd enjoy a treat today. Super kind, super nothing asked. And then just get a bunch of people in the office to sign it in different pens. And then you send it off to Brenda. Now, I used to run a vending machine route. And so I know from the work that I did that women tend to buy snacks, they like Skittles, uh, M&Ms, like stuff they can snack on through the day. Guys just want to eat a chocolate bar. Buy a chocolate bar, eat the whole thing. Women like to snack throughout the day. Skittles last in the mail. And so you can send that off to them. They're going to get this as a surprise. How many other people do you think thank the accounts payable clerk at the vendor? Nobody. Yeah, you're not. No. Do you see I, where this, this is, is what I tell my clients. Yeah, be Listen, nice. We're telling you all what we tell our clients for free. Do it. <laughs> Today's free day. Anyways, I could keep going. You can see I'm passionate about this. I, you know what? You and I have another interview coming up because we've got a part two. So I don't want to give everything away here, but there's so many little things that we can do that'll have a massive impact and make your business different. That is correct. And you're right. Everyone screams at the accounts payable person. If you're the friendly one, your stuff gets pushed to the top. And it, Starbucks card, if that's easier, oh, like so much figure easier. something out and just be nice yeah. to people. You'd be surprised at how quick. Now, I, I will tell you another secret. This is what I prefer. Yeah. Um, let's keep credit card number on file. Uh -huh. Right. Let's get money up front. Let, let's oh, get goodness, money at yeah. time of of completion or and I because because you deal in the trades, I I tell trades guys, listen, the last payment has to be the teeniest because more often than not, they will hold you up on the last payment and you don't want it to be 50 percent. You want it mm. to be five or 10 percent. So even if they screw you, you're still pretty much whole at the end of the day. That's nice. um, let's kind of combine the next two is budgets and bad accounting forecasts because sure. they kind of go together. A little bit. I pull them apart a little bit more, but budgets and bad accounting really just come to being proactive in your business. People will say, well, Dom, I don't know my budget for next year. And to which I will respond, that's why we're having this conversation. It is, okay, we're recording this in November. Half my clients already have their budget. The rest will have it shortly. Right, like, right. This is what, the, October, November is when we do our budgets. If our budget is done in December, we're late getting our budget done in, in but still my do it. books. But still do it. It doesn't matter. Well, Just get, start to do the process. Is. Start, yeah. Yeah. But yes, yeah. And, and we always, because I need something to measure against. I need to get a thumbs up, thumbs down. Which we're yeah. going to talk a lot about in the next episode. Thumbs up, yeah. thumbs down, building those dashboards. Um, yeah. But yeah, you have to have a scoreboard. Because if you don't have a scoreboard and a target. So let's go back to this. We'll go to sports. And I, I say this all the time. How many of you would watch a football game if there were no, there were no lines on the field? Yeah. Okay. No scoreboard. No time clock. Right? Who's, who's watching that football game? Nobody. <laughs> All right, your business is a little bit more important than that football game. If you don't have lines on the ground this quarter, this week, this day, if yeah. you don't have a scoreboard, hey, this is what's going on, and this is what we expected, and this is the time left, then, yeah, no wonder you're a mess. Ah, well. Yeah. And the last one is wrong customer, wrong job. And, and we've talked oh. a lot about this in the past, but, yeah. Yeah, I, and we talked about this before we even hit record because I know something else. Yeah, 
Yeah, it, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Completely unrelated and confidential topic. But you know what? Having the wrong customer. Actually, let me go back. Here, here's what I hear from a very human side, Rocky, is Dom, sometimes I take work to keep my guys going. I've got a great crew. I want to keep them. If I lose them, they're hard to find. So yeah, I take work just to cover costs. And unfortunately, that becomes a habit. When I understand who my perfect customer is, then I can market to that perfect customer. I, I want people to do this today. Start to, if you're a business owner listening to Rocky's show, think of yourself this way. I'm a marketer who just happens to run a construction company. Because yeah. that's what you are. That's what you are. You're a business owner who happens to run a construction company. For this conversation, I want you to be a marketer who happens to run a construction company. I had a, a painter, funniest guy in the world. Funny, funny, funny. Just a house painter, right? Not a commercial painter. Like he did homes. And uh, when I first met him, I'm like, you know, how busy are you? How many jobs do you do a year? He said the best line ever. He goes, well, Dom, I currently take a lot of unplanned vacations. <laughs> because he didn't have work, right? But here's, here's the thing that comes back to something that you and I would recognize. It's called imposter syndrome, where you don't feel like you're worthy. And I'm not going to go into that. You and I could have a bit, huge discussion on that. He lived in a two-bedroom bungalow in L.A., in a cultural part of town. He's Hispanic. And so in his mind, the only people he could paint for were other two-bedroom bungalows in his neighborhood. I said, dude, we got to get your car pointed, at your van pointed in a different direction. All we did was move. Literally, I said, just turn your van to another. We've got to go to a nicer neighborhood. Long story short, after quite a few smart moves, things we've talked about today, he did uh, a home where pressure washing the pool deck made him more money than he used to sell jobs for. Same guy, same van, same dog in the van with him. Same funny, funny, awesome guy. But wrong customer, wrong job when he was going after two-bedroom bungalows. Now he's doing uh, literally homes of the rich and famous. And there is the simple secret. If you work for people who have lots of money, your life gets easier as long as they're not a pain in the butt customer. <laughs> yeah, I know. True, true. But you know, you know what's, what happens today is people have a lot of money and no time. They don't own a ladder. You know, I'm talking obviously about construction. They don't own a ladder. They don't own tools. They don't know how to use a laser level. They don't have a, an, an account for lumber. They don't know what the right lumber is to buy. They don't know how to do posts. We do. My guys do. My crew. You know, like that's what we do. I know how to lift a hammer. <laughs> I got an air compressor over there. Oh, I nice. can play with power tools. But yeah. you know what I do? I hire people. I got a guy. I call a guy. Yeah. I got a guy. I, yeah. I don't want to do it. Because I realize that my time is more valuable doing something else than doing that. Now, occasionally, I'll do it for fun, for a hobby. Sure. But yeah, my nice. tools, I've had them forever, so I'm, I'm generally not going out and buying new ones. You're going to be the best garage sale ever one day. I mean, either that or I, the tools I bought were very good. Hopefully, I'll hand them down to my kids and, and he'll yeah. – I mean, my son made a mess of it already. He knows how to use them all, so – it's it's all good, but yeah. again, it, it uh, it's just fun and so forth. All right, so we're going to be back with another episode where we're going to dig into a whole different subject. In the meantime, if people would like to find you, where do they find you? Well, you know what I was going to suggest is if they want the report, how to find and fix your eight profit leaks, they could just uh, text me. That's probably the fastest way. Just text me and say profit leaks, and then I'll know which you know that they came from your show. And so, can I give my cell phone number? Well, how else are they going to text you? Yeah, I, well, I have to ask you permission, but yeah. Okay. No, you don't. So, Give out so your send, cell phone. Your phone's going to be ringing off the hook. Yeah, it'll ring it off the hook. Well, text me. Don't call me. But because then say, but say profit leaks and text me at 315-903-7853. And just say profit leaks. And that way I know which document to send. Profit leaks. That's it. 315-903-7853. I'll put the number in the notes so you can oh, thanks. see it. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great, Rocky. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this unedited video of the Profit Answer Man podcast. If you'd like to catch the full episode and learn more about what we do, check us out at ProfitComesFirst.com. 
We also go through the Profit First book in each and every chapter in the beginning episodes of the podcast, so check those out as well. Thanks for listening, and here's to you having a more profitable and growing business.